Let's balance the equation Na3PO4 plus CaOH2, sodium phosphate, and then we have calcium hydroxide here. We'll also take a look at the type of reaction. So first off, we have sodium and calcium. They're pretty much just switching places. So we can see the sodium is with the phosphate, but now it's with the hydroxide. Calcium is with the hydroxide. Now the calcium is with the phosphate. So the type of reaction here for Na3PO4 plus CaOH2 double displacement. Let's balance the reaction. Three hydrogen atoms. We use a little bit of a trick here. This phosphate, it's a polyatomic ion. Have it right here. We also have a phosphate ion over here. So it's on both sides. We'll just count it as one thing. So there are one phosphate ion, then we have one calcium, and again, the hydroxide, OH, that's a polyatomic ion. It's on both sides, counted as one thing. We have one hydroxide times the two. So we have two of those. On the product side, we have the one sodium, one phosphate times two, so we have two of those, three calcium atoms, and then one hydroxide. So you can see it's a lot neater when we count these polyatomic ions here as just one item. Makes balancing a lot easier. Get the same answer either way. Let's first just balance the sodium atoms. We could put a three here in front of the sodium hydroxide. One times three. That balances the sodiums. And then the three, it applies to everything. So we have the one hydroxide times three. That gives us three hydroxides. Hmm. Why don't we balance the phosphates next by putting a two here? So we have the three times the two. That changes our sodiums again. We have six. Then we have the one phosphate times two. That does balance the phosphates. Why don't we fix the sodiums? So instead of three here, let's make that six. We need to update these here as well. So we put a six in front of our sodium hydroxide. One times six, six sodiums. Let's update our hydroxides here. We have the one hydroxide times six. That gives us six hydroxides. I think now if we balance the calciums, we put a three here, that'll fix everything. One times three gives us three of those. Calciums are balanced. We have two hydroxides, so two times three. That gives us six. We're done. This is the balanced equation. If you're going to write the states, compounds with sodium, they're very soluble. So we'll put a little AQ after those. Calcium hydroxide is considered to be a strong base. It's not really very soluble, but we call it a strong base. So it's going to be aqueous. And then phosphates in general, they're insoluble. So calcium phosphate here, that's going to be a solid. That's going to be our precipitate. It's going to fall to the bottom of the test tube as a solid, as a precipitate. This is Dr. B with the balanced equation for Na3PO4 plus CaOH2, sodium phosphate and calcium hydroxide. We also said that it was a double displacement reaction, and we have this precipitate here, this calcium phosphate, which will fall to the bottom of the test tube as a solid. Thanks for watching.